Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 194. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This episode was streamed live on YouTube. If you want to make sure to catch the streams, then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. There are a lot of people on the internet that will say, oh, Adblock is not piracy. But then they are just jumping on this bandwagon. I miss Road America. Oh, is that for IndyCar? Yeah, a lot of people jump on this bandwagon of... Oh. Well, no, it's not. And because somebody else has said, no, Adblock is not piracy, they'll just go, yeah, that's fine. No, it's not. It is. You're bypassing... Oh, on the street. Oh, we got another Road America race. Don't worry, you got another one. Yeah, when it comes to, say, when it comes to piracy, like, sorry, I'm trying to turn this fan on. There we go. Um, obviously, that Peter meme is a brilliant example of it. Because of the fact, like, obviously, there is a line that is, some people have that line. you got to think, when it comes to piracy, it's down to consequence really what what consequences are you willing to take for for the piracy like what what consequences are you willing to do so when it comes to say for example i use twitch as an example right when it when you use an ad blocker on twitch right all of that ad revenue doesn't go to a creator however with the amount of percentage that a content creator gets on Twitch when it comes to using an ad block on that maybe that's fine for you I wouldn't blame you either if you were using an ad block on Twitch because the amount that Twitch gives you for ad revenue is slim to nothing majority of it's going to Twitch so the only person really struggling there is Twitch and I mean if you're going to sit there and maybe subscribe to a content creator on Twitch, it's fine. Again, if, if you're using YouTube, it's slightly different because YouTube actually pays their creators for the ads that you watch. If you sit here, every time you join the stream and you see an advert, I mean, the amount of ad revenue I earn, I, I, I can't give like exact numbers. But it bumps up how much I'm earning from it. Like, I'm actually getting paid to stream on YouTube as opposed to Twitch. There, there is revenue there. Granted, it's not much, but... I can definitely say if I did an 8-hour stream on YouTube with 20% of the views, I would get still get paid almost five times the amount that Twitch would pay me in revenue. So, it's a significant amount. And, what's even better, right, if I have the adverts how I have them at the moment, which is a lot less. So, on YouTube, on Twitch I have them every 10 minutes. On YouTube, I'd have them. I have them just at the start. You watch an advert when you start, and that's it. The rest of the stream is ad-free. Yeah, Twitch was every t every ten minutes. It had to be thirty seconds of ads to earn any money. Here, it's slightly different, and I can actually get a fairly reasonable amount from just one advert at the start of the stream. And I'd be earning... I think at the moment I'm earning the same as what I did on a Twitch stream. With less views... 
and less adverts. And I'm still earning the same amount. So it's a win-win for me. Because the viewers aren't as annoyed at the fact that there's so many adverts. You know. So when I when people are like, oh. Well yeah, I get I just use adblock on YouTube. Well actually what you're doing, even though, yeah, you might be screwing over YouTube and the cut that YouTube takes, they probably don't need. But the cut that the creator takes from all that ad revenue, quite substantial. And if you think, if half of the people use Adblock, that's 50% of my revenue gone. That's a significant amount, which is why I always say, if you're going to use, if you don't want adverts on YouTube, you are always better off getting YouTube Premium because you're still supporting the creators. Yeah, you might be paying YouTube, but at least you don't have adverts. Right, and it's a, a million times better than if you just straight up... Because YouTube premium revenue is still a substantial amount. Right? If you, I think the figures is like 1%. Anywhere from 1% to like 5% of users use YouTube premium. Not even that. So if you, if you look at that number and think... Actually, I'd probably be earning more money if everyone used YouTube premium. So real numbers wise, obviously it helps. But again, the, going back to that piracy conversation, it is all down to what consequences you're willing to put on other people. Like, okay, let's go back to video games, for example, right? If you're gonna pirate a video game, let's say Need for Speed Shift. Great example. Doesn't exist on any digital storefronts. Disc copy of the game doesn't work properly. Um, the only way you can get it is on Xbox or PlayStation. Like our old consoles. But what if you don't have one of those? What if you can't find it? Is it reasonable spending £250 to buy a decent quality console just to be able to play that one game because it's not available on digital storefronts elsewhere? No. Okay. Maybe that's a reasonable cause to, to pirate Need for Speed Shift. The consequence? Not that bad. EA isn't earning any money because they're not selling it anymore anyways. So, there's no money that they can get. Who's it hurting? Nobody. F123 on the other hand. Well, actually, it's a good game. Developers have worked hard on that. No. I wouldn't agree with Pirate in that. Even if you've got an agenda against CA. No. Not at all. F121, on the other hand, 2021, it's delisted. So, yeah, I'd probably agree with that one because you can't buy it. <laughs> Pirate in Wimra. <laughs> it's just a very and obviously piracy is a touchy subject some people are like well ooh. some people think no it's, it's bad it, it's down to where you think the consequences are really what you're willing to do I say if anyone uses adblock like here's the problem if you're going to use adblock on YouTube, right, you got to think of those consequences. The consequence towards a creator when you use adblock on YouTube is a lot, lot more significant than, say, the consequences of using um, adblock on Twitch. If you use adblock on Twitch, you're not really doing much, and it actually makes the experience a million times better. So, you know... But if you're doing it on YouTube, it does have... It's <laughs> still getting ads. Yeah, fair enough. Obviously, if you use the ad block on YouTube, for example, there's a lot more significant impact. 
But if you were to use that ad block, but then join as a channel member for the every creator that you watch, and th this is what I'm saying. I'm not saying that everyone should pay money to watch content online. Not at all. Because we're, we are in the age of the internet where people expect stuff for free. But nothing ever was for free. People have always had to pay to host servers, developers, whatnot. People have had to earn money, you know, because people need to live. And this is what a lot of people don't realize is that people need to make livelihoods. They expect like, oh, the internet should be free. No, no, not at all. Like, unfortunately, you don't go into a McDonald's and say, right, well, I need food to live, so you need to give me that burger right now for free. No, they tell you to fuck off and never come back. And they will quite easily buy you from McDonald's. It's the same with anything else. The only thing in the world... When you buy a subscription, you're essentially already ad-free in most cases. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't think buying a channel membership on YouTube is ad-free, but I, I would like that to be a feature. Because I would 100%, I'd be like, right, well, anyone that joins as a channel member, instantly no adverts. Even if it's the lowest tier, because you're still supporting the channel. I think that'd be great. In fact, YouTube, if you're watching, I, I know you are, because I'm on your platform right now. Make it so that it can be an option for creators to turn off adverts for anyone that joins as a channel member. Because I would make it, tier one, anyone that subscribed, no adverts. <laughs> I think it'd be a good idea. And I think a lot of people would be um, a lot more happy paying for channel memberships. Because again, YouTube gets cut out of that as well. So it's not like we just be taking away money from YouTube that way. Like, they still get a cut out of channel memberships. So they still get money. It just means that for one channel, they get no adverts. And again, if you think people are going to do that and be like, right, well, I don't want to pay for YouTube Premium. I only watch a couple of creators every so often. I don't want adverts on those videos. Right, I'll subscribe to three or four channels to get no adverts. And realistic, I mean, you can't think it's gonna work. It'd be great. I, this, is, this is the one thing I don't understand. Business doesn't make sense. The people that run businesses make it so that it's like, oh, let's make the most money possible. Oh, that means we won't be earning money for that. No, but actually they would end up earning more money. Realistically speaking, there's so many ideas. Like, I could quite easily take over three or four businesses for a day, give them all these ideas, and tell them they have to implement this for the next 10 years by law because I was CEO and I was running the company for the day. This must be implemented for the next 10 years. I'd make them all millions of money easily just from a couple of simple ideas still rather give money directly to you though yeah I'm, thank you very much for the uh super chat there Heinz. i appreciate it man thank you very much but yeah obviously that way is a cool oh it's got all my twitch emotes on it oh that's great <laughs> That's brilliant. Well, enjoy that absolute potato quality there. <laughs> oh, I need to change it so it's not my Twitch emotes and that's actually, you know, my normal ones. Or just remove it. I wonder if I can unlink my Twitch completely from Stream Elements. Because I think that's been messing up a lot.
Well, yeah, thank you very much for that super chat. I greatly appreciate it, man. Yeah, I hope so. But yeah, it's all, it's all down to what your personal, like, you know. I would love to see that get implemented. I do think it would be an awesome idea to see um, YouTube ad like ad free viewing if somebody becomes a channel member but obviously that's not quite the case yet but one thing I will promise any um, members exclusive videos I'm not making any exclusive videos just yet um, but there are going to be a couple of videos that become members only videos like special videos and I'm thinking of recording uh, a couple of members only videos all of those members only videos uh, that is for I believe it's for either for gold or diamond tier um, I want to say gold and sort of like members only live streams um, they'll all be ad free so whenever you subscribe to those they'll be ad free I do need to add a couple more perks to uh, all of the tiers. So I've got a couple more things. By the way, if anyone does have any ideas for some perks or stuff that they'd like to see on um, channel memberships or anything really, any ideas for like super chat rewards so that if somebody does a super chat I can do something. Okay. Yay. I believe the colour, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the colour of the super chat uh, represents sort of the price band, roughly. Like there's a sort of range, so like two to three dollars is like a certain colour in all currencies and then five to ten is like a certain color in a, another currency so i could do like say a light blue super chat will get you this i'll do this and then like a red super chat a uh, red would be fucking expensive I, th I think that's like the most expensive right but like some something along those lines i could do something like that I, I'm thinking bringing back the chili beans like the spicy jelly beans for super chats I think that'd be awesome to do but over 50 euros and more is red so yeah but I, I, even though obviously the colours sort of separate the values I love the idea that it's in local currencies. Like, people can show that they've supported with their own currency and whatnot. Because the one thing that I can always find that's like, I don't know, somewhat disappointing maybe, is the fact, obviously Stream Elements is going to do it because it's Stream Elements, but it, it takes whatever you've done and then converts it into a local currency that's just like, I mean, if you did it on Twitch, it would be like, well, oh yeah, that's a dollar. But I, I can imagine if, say for example, 50 might be a lot more in a different currency. And it does downplay it a lot. So the fact that YouTube just says it in the local currency, it, it's raw. It's, it's that money. That's what it is. You've given me 50 of your currency. I appreciate that. And it's a much more sort of enjoy, not enjoyable. That's not the right word. More realistic. 
more satisfying. Yeah. It's definitely awesome as well to know what it is. I'm, I'm singing YouTube's praises right now. <laughs> but no, I'm very much... I, I'm a big fan of streaming on YouTube at the moment. You can get cheap snacks. See, the difference is though, right? The thing is, the numbers in your currency and a lot of currencies around Europe that aren't just euros, the numbers are extremely high. So you look at the Turkish lira, for £1.50 you get 50 Turkish lira, something like that. But the thing is, for like 20 Turkish lira or 10 Turkish lira, you can get yourself a drink or something like that, which when you work it out, is about, what, 40p in the UK? You're looking at getting that similar drink in the UK, it's going to cost you £1.50. So, I mean, if you're looking for a cheap snack in the UK, a cheap snack is about a pound fifty, two pound. Like you want a bag of crisps, pound fifty, which is almost forty. Um, is it Czech krona? Like the amount that our inflation has gone up. What the fuck is that? Honestly, some of the cars in this game just don't know how brakes work. Yeah, it's just ridiculous how inflation is. Money, money's ridiculous. But do you want to know what's really depressing? Is if you're under the age of 16, you don't give a shit about inflation. So you end up growing up, and then as soon as you become an adult, and you start thinking, oh, well now I've got my own money, but I've got to buy everything now. Ah, fuck. Like, it's pretty bad. Also, my second monitor is about to fucking turn off. Uh, which means my chat will disappear halfway through this race. There we go. We're good. I have saved my second monitor from turning off. Okay, maybe it's this track, because uh, that was clapped. Okay, I'm I'm struggling with this track quite a lot. What are you doing, you idiot? track is struggling with you. This track is struggling to tame the beast that is the Audi. Such a good remix of this song, but I I was ooh fucking hell yeah bye bye fuck you Audi. It might be TDI can't be easily controlled. Nope. Sake, man.
dong ding dong ding dong dong ding dong ding dong ding dong ding That engine can be in the truck or lorry and tow something at the same time as racing. 100%. It's a diesel as well, so diesels have insanely good pulling power. They get a lot of power for little revs, which is why... The, the thing that I don't understand, right, is when people say, Oh, diesels are bad. Diesels are some of the most insane engines ever. Right? A diesel engine is a million times better than a petrol engine. Fuel economy is better. I mean, you can get good sounding diesel engines. They're obviously much rougher sounding, but some people like that. I don't mind the sound of that engine. And on top of that, the engine lasts a million years. Diesels, right? When it comes to driving a petrol engine car, if it's got 100,000 miles on the clock, your engine's struggling. Your engine's ready to die. 100%. Some petrol engines just won't fucking last that long. Diesels, the braking for a diesel engine is 100,000 miles. It will go for another 500,000 beyond that. Yeah, but emissions for a diesel are similar to what a petrol would be. And the problem is, a petrol car is designed to run at this rev range. Obviously, a diesel is going to be higher up across the rev range of the engine than a petrol. Because of the fact there's not as much of a range. But you're still going to be burning more fuel with a petrol. Yeah, I, I suppose it needs extras, but still, it's a diesel. I like diesel cars. I think they're all right. I think the VW Golf's quite a cool car, to be honest. Get fucked up!
The problem is, right, the emission scandal, a lot of people give... Uh, okay, I'm not gonna say what VW did was good, because it wasn't. They, they tricked a lot of people. But the problem is, the people that are going, Ah, oh, VW, you, you're an ass. you owe me money for the car that you gave... Mate, VW saved you fucking money, you idiots. Because of their emission scandal, they saved money. The whole point of what they were doing was to try and get better fuel economy. The only issue was that because of that, it meant that the emissions were worse. The car burnt a lot more fuel and a lot more ad blue and all that other stuff that cost you money when they were doing car tests to do the emissions. It ended up burning more fuel. And that reduced the emissions. It's ha the engine worked out all these tricks. So when people turned around and was like, right, you owe me money because you lied to me. The emissions are worse than what... A, they've got you in a better emissions band, so you pay less tax on the car. They've gotten you into paying less for your fuel because you're not having to fuel up as much and less other stuff. When the Porsche EcoFuel gets publicly available, then there won't be more crap in the air anymore. There'll still be crap in the air. The Porsche's fuel is made by using carbon dioxide to then make a fuel that obviously then gets turned back into carbon dioxide afterwards. So, it's, it's not that it's not putting crap in the air. Uh, yeah, okay, fair enough. You Fair enough, you already understand that then. Um, but yeah, the, the Porsche's eco... The thing is, it shouldn't be called Porsche's Eco Fuel. Um, and I hate that idea. Porsche is developing synthetic fuel. They're helping to fund development for it. WRC is already using this fuel that Porsche has like the Porsche is developing and investing in. Other companies need to invest in it, but it, it's not Porsche's ego. Um, the only issue that I have is the fact that F1 as a series is supposed to be the pinnacle of motorsport. Um, and yet because of money, they're like, ah, oh, we're now in Saudi Arabia and all these places that pump out so much fuel out of the ground and whatnot. Because of money, we won't use synthetic fuel. Yeah, it, it will use the mess that's already in the air to produce fuel. So, eventually it will actually help with the environment. And I think it's a great idea. I think synthetic fuel that doesn't take stuff out of the ground, that is made with the byproducts of cars, is a great idea. It keeps the co internal combustion engine, and if it if it takes a slight modification to get it to work, I mean, you look at fuel used to be leaded before it went to unleaded, and they had to modify cars to make them run on more modern fuel. If that modification has to be done again on all cars to get it to run synthetic fuel, by all means. And if the government makes it free to get those upgrades, or makes it free for any cars that are 10 years or younger, then even better. Oh no, don't don't apologize for it. You don't have to apologize. I'm just saying like, obviously it, it's, yeah. Um, the synthetic fuel's been, is the fuel that's currently being used in WRC. Uh, it was used last year, and this is being used this year. But it, it baffles me that it's not used in Formula One because of the fact, yeah. It's supposed to be the peak of motorsport, but Formula One is... 
quite possibly the most old school motorsport out there. Like, it's very much stuck in 2010. Like, you've got Formula E that's developing electric technology and all this for electric cars. You've got WRC that's developing synthetic fuel, pushing development for synthetic fuel, and is using... I mean, the engine rules that are coming in in 2026 require synthetic fuel, but the fact that they're doing it in 2026 and not, you know, now, when everybody is developing synthetic fuel, kind of confusing. I do think they need to make synthetic fuel for all cars though. What the fuck? What is it with the AI? What the hell was that? That's not even fucking funny. I actually need to double check my emails to see if I got a response. They moved from V10 to turbocharged V6s. Yeah, and when they went from V10s to turbocharged V6s, without losing any power, yeah, that was development. And that was when the entire Formula One was developing. But that was back in 20, was it 2013 or 2014? I wanna say 13. You think if, if that's almost 10 years ago, was the last major development for Formula One. That's not really showing Formula One in a good light as, oh, we're, we're the pinnacle of motorsport. We are the development powerhouse of all motors. No, you're not. Formula One is just, you know, Formula One now. It's what WRC was all those years ago. It's what it's what British Touring Car is now. It may as well be British Touring Car. Because British Touring Car is boring as fuck. Let's be real. It's interesting to go and watch when you're there in person. But let's be real. There's no development. There's no none of this. It's just people getting cars and race. That's what Formula 1 is now. Let's do this. That's the... St Do you know what the cool thing is? I'm not actually looking at my screen right now. I am looking at OBS. But because of the fact that I've got this new capture card, which has zero latency, I can literally look at OBS and play this game at full, full speed. Okay, that was just me being terrible. I can play this game at full speed as if I'm looking at the main display. The only difference is I'm now looking at a version of the game that's got my face on it. See? <laughs> that's fucking great. But yeah, I can, I can literally look at my OBS and play the game. Obviously, it's better to have it on a full screen rather than a little preview. But if push comes to shove say I go down to one monitor, I could literally play it with OBS there and then you know, when POV cam. <laughs> Do you know what? I'd be very tempted. Uh, now that I've got two webcams actually, I could plug in a second one um, and use that. I'd have to like do some weird magic with it but I could potentially 
if I was to do an F1 series to add face cam, which is facing me, um, on stream. Then on stream, I could also have strapped to my chest, have, no, it wouldn't be forehead, but have a camera pointing towards my wheel. And then I could also, on top of that, record that wheel camera and put that on the YouTube video. So the YouTube video would only have the gameplay and the wheel. That could be an awesome idea. Oh, for fuck's sake. Fuck. <laughs> that is amazing. What the hell? <laughs> Uh, I'm keeping that in the video. Normally, I just crop it out and restart, but I'm keeping that because that's funny. Too bad I can't clip. You can clip on YouTube. If you... There is a bar at the bottom that's got, like, share, save, and whatnot, but there is a clip button on YouTube. You can make YouTube clips. It's so cool. The only thing is, I haven't worked out how to do uh, YouTube shorts from live streams. I can do it from videos, but I can't do it from live stream. But I don't know whether it's because I maybe haven't turned the option on. Oh, I've got to do almost 20 laps around here. Never gonna sleep again, never gonna sleep again. We can do it all alone. Again and again and again and again. Well, that's one of the AI cars that has crashed into there because I rewound. So the AI is struggling around this track. So if the AI struggles, you know, it means I'm better than AI. And that means I'm amazing. I'm gonna howl like an animal. Because lately it's hard to let you know. Oh, what the hell? I've done it again. Twice in a row. this because this is funny <laughs> okay so for these sections I actually need to be more careful oh this is funny I'm not even kidding I've had over a minute of this race where I've just been in replay mode or rewind mode sorry I really do need to check my messages at some point. Oh, is this Nightmare? Yeah, I thought so. I heard the little ding and then I was like, hang on, there's only one or two songs on this playlist. It's this choir at the start. And one of them is Nightmare. to lap cars. We're not even six laps in and I'm lapping cars. Though to be fair, a lot of these cars have probably crashed, so this one in front probably doesn't have a front bumper. <laughs> I almost biked him into the wall. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. Let's just burn it. Smell it. I've done it again. It's so difficult. This track is tough. I'm so glad that this track got removed after this game. It was probably this race. Everyone was going on their forums. On their crappy Internet Explorer computers from 2009. To send angry messages on a forum saying, I don't like... Do you know, the funny thing is, Reddit is literally one of the few forums, like, websites, that is a forum format that still exists today. And that works. A lot of places don't do forums for the whole... Unless it's, like, technical support or fucking like support pages or FAQs stuff like that I very rarely use forums not to the extent that it was used all those years ago but Reddit is the only publicly available and easily accessible public forum out there like it's the only one really left they used to have all these old forums you hit hear about stories of other reddit is the only big forum because it is a forum technically yeah that's weird to think about Looking so mm, it's your fucking nightmare ha 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 Clip in general chat. Nice. Let's go. I've already caught up with a Bentley and I'm about to lap it. Yeah, the Bentley's definitely crashed, so that's why he's slow. I'm slow just because I'm slow. I don't have an excuse for that one. I y'all end up like the others. Your nightmare comes alive. Yeah. The prize of evil. Do you know what? I have just realized this year, in two months' time, it will have been five years since the first Forza video that I uploaded on Horizon 4. Five years since I started my YouTube journey. Five years. I need to do a special video for five years. I'm gonna do, I think I might do a special video and then do, oh, I don't know. It'd be like extra on top of the Forza mega series already. But I think I wanna do like one special video. Oh yeah, I was a team when I started. I'm 21 now. 
was 16 when I started YouTube. Technically speaking, I, I started YouTube when Forza Horizon 4 came out. The day it came out, I was like, right, I'm going to make a YouTube video for this. And I have no idea where my thought process was for it. Because I... Here's the thing, right? So... I... Uh, this is going to be a long story, actually. Uh, maybe not. I think I'll be able to get it before the end of this race. So... I... Was, technically speaking, I was making YouTube videos before that. My YouTube channel was made in 2017. I had the name, Mechanic CG, whatnot. Um... I made the channel, and I made a, I made the start of a small series that I wanted to do. I did two videos, that was it. And the series was, I had this shitty editing software that was worse than Lightworks, what I used, used before, and then DaVinci. It was dreadful. But it did the job on the shitty laptop that I had. And the series was going to be, um, it was on Forza Motorsport 6. And it was beating Top Gear lap times, which I actually have. Oh shit. Was that the Peugeot back there? Probably not. Um, I actually have a video on this channel beating Top Gear lap times, which is going to become a members only video because anything that's not the Falls Omega series is pretty much becoming members only. Um, other than like the main walkthrough series. Um, yeah, I I was doing Top Gear lap times, trying to beat Top Gear lap times, so I did one for the Audi R8, I tried to beat the Top Gear lap time for the Audi R8, I did that, um, there's another one afterwards, and it basically made two videos, I can't remember the second one, but the first one, I remember the thumbnail, I remember editing it, it was such a good experience and I thoroughly enjoyed it I thoroughly enjoyed sitting there making that video made it and then I deleted it because I didn't like how it was going I didn't enjoy it um I then made one more video that was showcasing off the F1 uh telemetry trying to set up telemetry for F1 2017 and I got an iPad, a, you know, your typical shitty YouTube tutorial video, and it got 2.5k views. I was like, wow, this is pretty good. I've obviously deleted it because it was cringe as fuck. Um, it's fucking annoying. Come on. It was cringe, so I deleted it, but obviously, you know... I still had it. I still had this video up there up until about I would say a month before I started this series. Like started YouTube doing um, what's it called? Forza Horizon 4. No, it, here's the thing. That was the only cringe video I threw away. Everything else I've embraced. I've even kept Mo uh, Forza Horizon 4 and even when I do my new playthrough of Forza Horizon 4 I'll still be keeping the old one it will be members exclusive because it will be classed as a video archive and I need to make money from it somehow <laughs> but um, I've kept it it's still there I still go back to it and watch it every so often cringe as fuck but it's a nice refreshing sort of boost to say this is where you started out this is where you're at now. You've worked hard for this. Well done, kind of thing. But um, no, I look. I I remember. I remember the entire day, and I don't understand how. So I remember sitting, um, going home, and I remember sitting at midnight, right? And this is like five minutes before Forza Horizon Four is announced. So it's five minutes to midnight before Horizon 4 releases. And literally that month, I got my first bank account. I got everything. So I got my, I still have that bank account to this day. 
but I got my first bank account, I got my first money and whatnot. And I was like, do you know what? Because I used to get money every few <laughs> ego trip, understandable. <laughs> Is to get money every two weeks. That would be uh, spending money. Obviously, I had enough for the ultimate edition of Forza Horizon 4. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to be a big boy. I'm going to buy my first video game with my bank card. And I pre-ordered it five minutes before the game came out. The game came out, and I started downloading it. And I had a late start for college that day. I think I was starting at like 11.50. I woke up, I recorded that one video. I recorded only that. Um, and that video was on the morning before I went to college. I went to college early, sat down with my college laptop. Well, it was, it was my own laptop because I bought my own one for college. Everyone else didn't do that. It was my laptop. I opened it up and... Um, started editing uploaded it and it was all out by 12 o'clock uploaded thumbnailed everything and I enjoyed the process it, it wasn't the most advanced editing but it did the job and I had the video out on release day really early and I was really hoping that it would get a lot of views because of the fact it's release day people are going to be interested in watching it what the hell did I hit Uh, obviously it didn't get a lot of views, which is understandable, to expect a lot of views is kind of unreasonable on Twitch or YouTube, and I look back at it now and I'm like, there's no chance I was getting it. But, I was very excited, and I enjoyed it, and it ever since then, like, I've just been making videos, pretty much every few days. Before, um, it was obviously a video every day. Yeah, I, I had a period of time where I didn't make a video on YouTube for about a year and a bit. But I've come back again, and now I'm making videos again. Yeah. I'm hoping it can keep growing. Hopefully. We'll see. AR12 to be famous on Forza. I'm not going to be famous on Forza, no. But maybe I might be famous for being the guy that played through every single Forza and completed every single race. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.